We've arranged a lovely luncheon of coconut. If I see one more coconut, I'm going to barf up Detroit. Huh? The Wild Thornberries is a cartoon that I feel like nobody talks about, but everybody remembers. It's just tattooed in all of our brains, like those zoo book commercials. The animated 90s Nickelodeon cartoon got five seasons and is pretty much critically acclaimed, even getting its own movie and crossover movie with the Rugrats later on. To think there was a time when the Wild Thornberries was at your local movie theater, that just feels crazy to me. But again, the movie was critically acclaimed, and it just goes on to say how big this show really was. I mean, for real, as little as is talked about nowadays, Wild Thornberries is a pretty famous show, so I decided to give it another watch, and it's even managed to live on in meme form, which is something very few properties get the honor of. I am, of course, talking about the brilliant Nigel Thornberry, and originally, I just wanted to do a video talking about Nigel Thornberry because this man is a legend, and I don't think he really gets enough credit, but as I was writing and researching, I realized that there's a lot more to the Thornberry family than just Nigel. This is one of the craziest and darkest families in all of cartoon history, and I'll explain why. Guys, I'm Nemo, and today, let's talk about the Thornberries. The Wild Thornberries originally debuted in 1998, the show centering on a girl, Eliza, touring around the world with her parents who have a nature show, with the twist that she can magically speak to animals, but can't let anybody know. It's a pretty good premise on its own, paired with the fact that it was made by production company Klasky Hoopso, who were at an all-time high with the success of Rugrats at the time. The Wild Thornberries was a well-deserved success, running for six years, ending in 2004. But there was a twist with Wild Thornberries that not a lot of other cartoons had, because the Wild Thornberries chose to specifically focus on the parents as integral characters in the show. After doing focus groups and discovering that kids actually care about the struggles of their parents. This was pretty big because at the time Nickelodeon was pretty focused on just having kid-centered programming. So to have a show that actually featured the parents as prominent characters, including showing their own struggles and problems and not just having them be ambivalent figures to the kids, it was a whole different type of format and honestly they did it really right. Before I talk about how strange this family is, let me explain each member. The main character, of course, I mentioned before is Eliza, and she is a character who for the entirety of the series is in her element. She loves to explore, she loves nature, and she can talk to animals, so she's probably having more fun than most people. Though it is a secret she has to keep, and I always wondered why, turns out in the movie, it just causes the world to end, so it's pretty dark actually. A lot of weight is being held on this poor child. I can talk to animals. As for the origin of her powers, it was actually explained in the season 2 episode The Gift of Gab, in which we see a flashback where she saves a warthog from a trap, only for the warthog to terrifyingly transform into the shaman, who explains he's actually been freed from his curse. As a reward, he grants her one wish, and her one wish is to talk to animals. Look, that wouldn't be my first choice, but I guess it makes her happy. Her best friend and companion is Darwin, a chimp that only she can talk to. He's one of the best characters in the show, if not my second favorite, besides of course, Nigel, because he just has like a British accent, and he's so posh, even though he's a monkey, you guys, he's just a monkey, he doesn't drink tea. Why is he talking like that? Couldn't they draw a better flag? Maybe put some hair on the guy's head or something. There's two other children in this family. There is Donnie. Donnie's origin is that they, quote, found him. So that's cool. Not, not weird or sketch at all. I mean, this kid is insane. He's basically an animal. It's played for jokes, but if you really pull the curtain back, it's incredibly dark and twisted to think about this underdeveloped child with animalistic tendencies. What is he going to look like as an adult? Is he going to hurt someone? They also kind of treat him like an experiment. For instance, in the episode Temple of Eliza, they discover that he can set the dinner table, so they do everything in their power to film him doing it. I know that you found this kid, okay, and have accepted him into your family. That's cool. But you should be impressed that your adopted son can set the dinner table, and you shouldn't be filming it either. What is their end game with this child? Poor Donnie. He eats bugs. Also, he's borderline dangerous, but hey, that's all I really have to say about him. He's kind of just weird comedic relief. The person I actually feel the most for is Debbie. She is the saddest part of the show. Debbie is a teenage girl who dresses like Nirvana. She's very 90s, and she just wants to be a normal kid. She fantasizes about simply having her own bedroom. One time, they got an opportunity to live in Europe, and she was so excited to finally have a normal childhood just for Nigel to switch it up at the last minute and decide they're gonna go back to the Sahara middle of nowhere, leading to Debbie having a mental breakdown and just hitting her head against the wall. This poor girl just let her go to school. In fact, it's very twisted because in the Wild Thornberries movie, the whole premise is that it's too dangerous for Eliza, so they send her to school as a punishment. Meanwhile, they refuse to send Debbie home in any capacity. This poor girl. I will get more into the logistics of this horrible scenario later on, but I just want to let you guys know, Debbie deserves your sympathy. You promised me I could have my own room when I was four and you took my room away. I didn't take your room. Eliza was born. 
And haven't I suffered enough? Now, for a show that claims to focus on the parents, they do an incredible job of it. Before I get to Nigel, though, I want to talk about the mom and why I do not like her. She's not nice. She's kind of cold. She's kind of the matriarch of the family. She's got to be tough. But listen, you dragged your kids to the jungle, okay? There are times when they completely lose their home and their vehicle. You do not have the jurisdiction to chastise them or boss them around at that point. You screwed up as a mother. Your kids are homeless in the jungle. They're constantly bringing their children to dangerous scenarios and then basically telling them to, like, suck it up if things go bad. Lady, your kids are almost dying constantly. Don't act like this is their fault. But at the same time, I do love her for that fact. They didn't make her just like sweet and passive. In fact, she actually has issues with mother-in-laws. It's actually a very real depiction of a parent relationship with their child. You think I'm always on top of things, but inside I'm really very nervous. You never show it. That's because I'm your mom. But now let's get to the bread and butter, the holy grail of this show, the thing that's keeping it alive, Nigel smashing Thornberry. Now there's been plenty of cartoon dads, but there is literally no one like Nigel. Maybe it's the way they wrote him, maybe it's the brilliant performance by Tim Curry, who basically makes the character, but I truly believe he's one of the most important characters in all of television history. There's nobody like Nigel, his voice, his mannerisms. It was all unique to him, and it was also so distinctly weird and endearing at the same time time. What a smashing stall! Arguably, it's crazy they even got Tim Curry to voice him. That's a really big, a huge actor. But Tim Curry isn't the only famous voice on the show. Donnie was actually voiced by Flea from the Red Hot Chili Peppers. <laughs> And Darwin the Monkey was voiced by Tom Kane, who famously voiced Professor Utonium in the Powerpuff Girls, as well as just being an incredibly accomplished voice actor. In any given episode, his childlike wonder and naive love of nature may get him into trouble, but he always keeps his spirits up, and he's kind of the ideal perfect dad. He's adventurous, he has like a medal for being a hero. I would love to have him as my father. And if he didn't have his wife to balance out the dynamic, I think that his kids truly would be dead by now. He seems to not understand danger. There's a great quote by Tim Curry talking about how Nigel has never grown grown up and that's what's special about him. But they literally struck gold with this character. In fact, I would argue that his face is more recognizable than the entire show. He single-handedly became its mascot in a weird way. And that is partly to do with his character, but also the elephant in the room, which I'm going to address right now, his status as a meme. Who would have known years after the show ended that Nigel would have a second life as one of the greatest internet memes of all time? You could take your pick. He's actually had a couple. Of course, there's Smashing, which is probably his biggest one, but let's not forget that weird voice sound he makes that people inserted in songs. <laughs> probably a whole generation of kids that don't know much about the wild thornberries but know this man's face and i think that's crazy powerful but not only is nigel an incredible father he's a sick husband this guy is husband of the year seriously he's comforting he calms his wife and that's one thing i love about these two as parents and as characters in the show they're a really great team not only as parents but also in their job now technically they run a nature show though logistically i have no idea how she just has one camera there's not a crew and nigel kind of just explains explains things in the background. Do they have editing software? Do they use Premiere? Still, that's the whole reason they're on this globetrotting adventure, so I guess it's got to be a pretty popular show. But it's great to see them break the whole ball and chain dynamic of marriage, and it's inspiring to see them act as a team. Honestly, I want my marriage to look like this one day, in some capacity. Not to mention the fact that outside of his status in his family, he's also an incredibly powerful individual, at one point being knighted by the Queen of England. In fact, that's the same episode where he decides not to take a teaching job so that they can resume their globetrotting adventures and Eliza can be happy, again, at the expense of Debbie being happy, but I've already explained how screwed up that is. He looks after all his kids equally and he's a great dad because he never grew up. And for a character, I think that's a really unique idea. Are you filming? Not anymore. It moved. The rock moved? Astonishing. In fact, some of the best examples of him as a father comes from the Wild Thornberry's movie. Because it's a movie, the stakes are a lot higher, and naturally the biggest thing of all happens, Eliza gets sent out of her jungle life and to boarding school. But this only happens because Nigel wants what's best for her. He truly believes that it's just too dangerous at this point, and as much as he wants his daughter there, he knows this is what's best for her, even though ultimately I guess it's not, and it gets undid, but hey, don't think about it. In fact, this is a great example of both of them as parents, as they have a discussion about how they don't want to split their family up. They had real tender moments, and that's why the Wild Thornberry's family feel 
so real. The movie is the best example of it, okay? It's the most realistic depiction of the show because it's a movie. This thing came out in theaters and it's crazy. It's really beautiful, but I can't get over these character designs. I don't think we were meant to see these types of character designs from so many different cinematic angles. Th that lighting's good though. Unfortunately, there was a whole other show that was in the movie. And this is where my gripe comes in. This family is screwed up. These parents dragging their children along so that they could make their TV show at the expense of them having normal lives under the guise of adventure? I'm calling them out. These kids almost die constantly. They're barely supervised because the parents are always doing something else. They let a monkey hang out with them, which I'm not saying is wrong, but you gotta get that thing checked, right? Like it could have diseases. I'm not 100% certain they didn't just steal Donnie from somebody else. How do you have the jurisdiction to just find a child? There's one episode where Eliza feels neglected from her parents and family. She feels like all the attention is on everyone else but her. A common thing that children face, especially middle children. Technically, she's a middle child, I think. The problem is, when Eliza gets sad and wants to walk away, she doesn't go down to her friend's house, she doesn't go to her room, she just walks into the jungle, gets on a raft, just rides down the river. In fact, in this specific episode, she befriends cheetahs that almost kill her. Imagine if she died. I mean, I'm not trying to go to that dark place, but imagine if any of them died. Debbie is barely cute in ever. And I know what you're thinking. It's just a cartoon. Why are you so angry? Because. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Why am I so angry? Look, at the end of the day, and the whole point of this video, the whole bowl I want to wrap it up with, is that maybe it's quirky and funny at times, but watching it back recently, this is not a safe environment for these children, and honestly, the whole family dynamic is kind of dark, as lovable as they can each be individually. Now, that being said, The Wild Thornberries is still a wonderful watch, and the fact that it's 22 minutes just gives it, like, beefier episodes. We don't really see that anymore. It's cool to see A and B plots focusing on the parents, but all I know is that if I was in Eliza's shoes, I'd be dead by now. Small price to pay, though, for Nigel to be my dad. That would actually be sick. But anyways, guys, that's my take on the wild thornberries and the thornberry family as a whole. But as always, I want to know what you guys think about all of this stuff. Do you think I made valid points? Did you watch this show? Did you not? Did you hate it? Let us know in those comments down below. Tweet to us around Table Vids or me at Retro Nemo. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like, share it, and subscribe to the Round Table for more incredible cartoon content. As always, guys, I'm Nemo. This is a wild thornberries video, and I will see you next time. Peace.